In this video, I'm going to introduce truth trees and how to find a set of inconsistent woofs. We're only going to be looking at truth trees with the operators of negation, conjunction, and disjunction in this video, and in the next set, we will look at the conditional and the biconditional. Okay, so what is a truth tree? A truth tree gives us another method that allows us to check if a woof is a tautology or a contradiction, or if we have a valid argument. Uh, it also checks for things called consistency and inconsistency. So what I have here is an example of a truth tree. And I'm just going to use this example to go over some terms. So first of all, what we always do is on the left side, we always number our steps. So this allows us to keep track of what we're doing in each step. We always start our truth trees with an assumption. So this is what we're taking for granted. This is what we're looking at. So if we want to check if a woof is a tautology, then our tautology would be our assumption. And same with our contradiction. Uh, if we have a valid argument we're checking out, we put our assumptions and our conclusion there. There are certain ways that we do that, and we'll talk about it when we get to that. Uh, in this case, we're just taking a look at two woofs to see if they're consistent or inconsistent, meaning if they're all together, do we get a contradiction, or can we assign different truth values to make it work? When we get a contradiction, so we get a proposition and its negation, we close that tree. So we put a little x by it, and this means that it is a closed branch. So this right here, this is like an or branch, an or branch here. So every time we get an or, we build it into two branches. And when we close a branch, that means that there is an inconsistency there. That branch is impossible to complete. Um, if it's not closed, we might put a circle down there, uh, but this is called an open branch. And basically this means that there is no contradiction. So in this case, uh, A is true, B is true, and this allows us to keep that branch open. Uh, if all the branches are closed, so imagine that we have, say, B, and let's say that we somehow get uh, a negative B here and this is closed, then this would then be called a closed tree because all of the branches would then be closed. If there's at least one branch that is open, then it's called an open tree. Now on the right side, we have what is called our justification. So these are the rules we use, and this lets us know exactly what we did in our truth tree to get to those steps. So basically, uh, this is justifying that you're using the rules that you're using and that you're using them properly. So this might look like a mess right now, but let's actually look at how we can deal with rules and how our truth trees can break up. So the first rules that we're looking at are conjunction decomposition and disjunction decomposition. Now, these are always a pain to write out in full, so we give them little abbreviations here. So uh, and D would be how we justify conjunction decomposition, and we would write or D to write disjunction decomposition. Now in a tree, if you have A and B, then we can write down A and we can write down B and we can check this off to say we're done with this. We've decomposed it into its atomic form, A and B. And this is true because remember, uh, when is A and B true? A and B is true when A is true and B is true. So that's what this is showing. Uh, this is the same thing as saying A is true. This is the same thing as saying that B is true. Okay, so that is conjunction decomposition. So anytime we see two woofs joined with a conjunction, we can break them up into two components. And we would justify this by saying, okay, from one, we did conjunction decomposition in line two. And then in line three, from one, we did disjunction or conjunction decomposition. Okay, what about when we have this case, A or B? Well, this time what we can do, because this is or, so we're going to have branching paths. So we'll have one path that goes left, one path that goes right. Uh, the left path will give us A, the right path will give us B. And how we can justify this after we check this off is we can say, okay, this came from line one, and this is or decomposition. Because remember, when is A or B true? A or B is true if A is true or B is true. So this is like our or. We're going into different branching paths and we're saying this is situation one where A is true and this is situation two where B is true. So that's conjunction and disjunction decomposition. These are our two basic rules. Now, when we add a negation in here, 
it's important to understand how the truth values work so that way we can really internalize and understand these rules. So let's take a look at negation. If we have double negation, so not not a, we just get a out of it. And we call this the n. So in this case, we would justify this by saying from one, we did double negation. So not not a gives us a. Okay, that's a fairly straightforward rule. Now when we get into negated conjunction decomposition and negated disjunction decomposition, these are a little bit different. And uh, the notation for the justification is a little bit ugly. Uh, so you can write not and d, or if you want to make it a little bit nicer, you could do and nd or and dn for uh, negated decomposition or decomposition negated. It's up to you, uh, w whatever works for you. So let's think about this. Not a and b. So I should write this out nicer because I want to take a look at the truth values first. Not a and b. So when is this true? In other words, when is a and b false? So not a and b is true if, okay, uh, let's think about this. If, hmm, okay, if not a is true or not b is true. Now, I think a better way of thinking about this perhaps is to ask when, <laughs> rather, if that's a little bit harder to internalize, when we say that not A and B is true, what we're really saying here is that A and B is false. So when is A and B false might be the better way of thinking about it. Well, that's the case when A is false or B is false, right? Okay, well, what's another way of saying that? That's like saying not A is true or not b is true because remember when we when we negate those atomic statements we flip the truth value so when we break this tree up we have two branches we have one case where we have not a and we have one case where we have not b because as we did before on the right side looking at the truth values either not a is true or not b is true that's the same thing as saying that not a and b is true so that might take a little bit of time to internalize but this would be justified by saying one, not and, decomposition. So you know, it's a little bit trickier when you first start out, so you will internalize these eventually, but that's the reasoning behind why this rule is the way it is. Now what about not A or B? Well, let's do the same thing here. So not A or B being true is the same thing as saying that A or B is false. So when is A or B false? Well, specifically, when a is false and b is false. So we want to talk about when these things are true. So this would be saying that not a is true and not b is true. So what happens then in the decomposition rule for not a or b, we need not a true and not b true. So that gives us not a and that gives us not b. So this would justify from being one uh, not or decomposition and one not or decomposition. Okay, so these are the five rules that we're using today to try some truth trees. So again, this might take a little bit of time. It's good to have it written down on a reference sheet somewhere when you first start these things, but as you do more practice, you'll just internalize these. So let's see how this works. But what I should talk about first is what inconsistent means, since I've alluded to it. Uh, a set of whoops is called inconsistent if those whoops have a closed truth tree. In other words, we have a contradiction no matter which path we take. So that basically means that both of these things cannot be true at the exact same time. So let's take a look at how a truth tree can show us inconsistency. So what this means is we're going to complete the truth tree and every branch that we have is going to close. So this is a simple one. We're just looking at A and not B or A. Okay, so when we have an atomic proposition on its own, we can't do anything with it. So we just have A as a fact, but what about not B or A? Well, remember the rule for this, what's gonna happen? Uh, not B or A is true when B or A is false. So that means B is false and A is false. And that's the same thing as saying that not B is true and not A is true. So from this, you can either reference the rule sheet or we can work it out and we're going to get that we have not B and we have not A. So that's going to be line three and line four. 
So how do we justify this? Well, these come from line two, and what are we doing? We're doing not or decomposition. Okay, at this point, we're actually done. <laughs> so that was a really simple one, but this is the process that we do. So why does this close? This closes because we have A and we have not A. So we have a contradiction there. We're saying A is true and not A is true at the same time. That means they're inconsistent because we have a contradiction there and our entire tree is closed. And what we should do is we should put a little check mark beside not B or A to show that we're done, but because it was so quick, I forgot to do that. But it's a good way to keep track of things that you've taken care of. Anyways, because this closes, this means that these two well-formed formulas together are inconsistent, which means they both cannot be true at the same time. Okay, let's do one example that's a little bit more complicated. Just a few more steps. So we want to show that P or Q and P or R, as well as not P and not R, are inconsistent. So we have a few more things we can do here. First of all, let's deal with one, P or Q and P or R. Well, we have an and here, which means that we can break these up. So we know that uh, P or Q is going to be true, and we know that P or R is going to be true. So this will be line three and line four, and both of these come from one with and decomposition. So we're done with that one. Let's check that off. Now we have P or Q, P or R, not P and not R. And what we should do is we should take care of things that don't branch first. Because the more branching paths we have, the more things that can branch off and we can end up with six, eight, 10, 12 branches depending on how complex things are. So let's get rid of all the ands first. Okay, so we're gonna get not P, not R. And that comes from line two, since not P and not R gives us not P, not R. That'll be line five and line six. So we can justify this by saying we have two and decomposition, two and decomposition. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to move things up just a little bit to give us a little bit more space in case we need it. Okay, so now we have two complex well-formed formulas left to deal with. We have the one on line three, the one on line four. So let's branch one of these paths. Let's do P or Q for the sake of demonstration. I could do P or R and I could end it right now, but let's do P or Q just to show how this works. Okay, so P or Q, it's an or, so we're gonna have branching paths. So in line seven, we're gonna get P on the left, we're gonna get Q on the right. So this comes from three and this is or decomposition, we took care of it. Now we can close our left branch because we have P, and we have not P, so we have a contradiction there. So we can close that branch. So now we still have to deal with not P or R, or sorry, now we have to deal with P or R. So we have to do decomposition on that again, and we're going to get branching paths. So on the left side, we're going to get P. On the right side, we're going to get R. This comes from line four, and this is or decomposition, and we'll call this one line eight. So once again, uh, the left branch is going to close because we have P and we have not P, but the right branch is going to close as well because we have not R and we have R. So all of the branches have closed now, which means that we have a closed tree. Therefore, because the entire thing is closed, we know that the well-formed formulas above that we started with are inconsistent, meaning that these two well-formed formulas, P or Q and P or R, as well as not P and not R, cannot both be true at the same time. So that's it for this video on truth trees for and, or, and not. I want you to try to do these ones on your own. So take these three, whoops, do a truth tree for those, and then do these two whoops and do a truth tree for those, and I'll have a solution video posted within 24 hours. But as always, if there's any comments or any questions, you can post them down in the comments below and I will get to you as soon as I can.